Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Brother Wes coming to you today. I, um, I'm not going to be, honestly, I'm not going to be before you long. Uh, at the longest, maybe 10 minutes. But today, I, I just want to drop this in your, in your spirit as we uh, come to the end of our, uh, of the year, of the new year. We go into another year. And there's a word that God spoke to me and I want to uh, release and encourage you in this particular word. And so what this word will do, when I explain it to you, the word that God gave me, it's going to give you, uh, it's going to give you understanding. And I'm going to try to paint a picture to you uh, to, wherein you could see actually what God is doing in your life. And um, I'm not going to be before you long, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, but sorry I was running late because... I had to do a lot of things because the funeral is tomorrow. The funeral is, uh, the wake is uh, 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 5.30 tomorrow. And so we are preparing for that. Um, and so we thank you for all your prayers and your patience and your love. And we're just grateful. It's going to be a homegoing celebration for my sister. She was a, a beautiful soul, love God, and uh, love people. Very kind, uh, very uh, charming, uh, you know, that West Gene. Uh, but she was like my mother too. She, um, all of my sisters, they raised me. I'm the baby of seven, but she really put time in with me. And she was one of the people, just like my mother, that I can turn to to talk to. Because, you know, you need someone you can turn to to talk to. And so that was my sister, Gloria. She, I was able to talk to her. And the thing about it, I was able to talk to her, and I didn't have to worry about it going somewhere else. Or I'm um, hearing it, or it beat me back. And so um, I thank God for her, and we're gonna we thank and praise God for that she's done made it, the place that we're trying to go. So the word that God spoke to me today, and I'm gonna try to be br real brief. I'm gonna give maybe one point, maybe two points. Uh, but God told me to let you know, and He spoke this word to me: uh, "Wait until it fits." Can you hear me? Wait until it fits. And see the thing about it. See, many of you, uh, there are things that God has promised you. There are things that you're believing God for. And the, t the toughest part when you want to do something is waiting for it because you want it right now. You want it right now, especially when you're the sword in your spirit. And so uh, God said, wait until it fits. And if you think about it, if you look at it, uh, the fit, you could look at clothes, like wearing clothes, wearing clothes as an example. Now, I'm going to use an example of my daughter, Emily, briefly. Now Emily, now Emily is 16 months old, but she's received uh, certain clothing that is too large, that's too big. Their clothes are too big, some pajamas, different things that are too big. And so we're not going to throw it away, but we're going to wait until she grows up, develops, becomes larger, then she will be able to fit what was bought for her. I hope this makes sense. See, clothing. Now, if you look at it, if you look at it, waiting, the promise, the promise, whatever your promise is, that's your clothes. Whatever you believe in God for, that's your clothes. If you believe in God for a relationship, someone to marry, to, uh, to, to wine dine with, to grow old with, those are your clothes. And now some of you, now some of you, you've been in a relationship, a bad relationship, after a bad relationship, but those relationships if you catch the teaching moment behind it, uh, the failed relationship or the bad relationship, what it does, it prepares you and it develops you and it teaches you how to appreciate when that time come, when you will find uh, men, that lady, and lady, that guy. And so the, the, the track record or the stuff that we make, they are preparing us to be able to fit into what it is that God has called us that we can have. And see, oftentimes, also, also, there are times that we think that there's certain things that we should have right now, and we discover that uh, we don't get it or it doesn't happen. We're waiting on a job, the job didn't happen. That relationship, it didn't happen. We're waiting on the healing, it didn't happen. See, oftentimes, when it doesn't happen at that time, it's premature. You're not ready. Mentally, emotionally, you're not ready yet. And so what God has to do, God has to give it some time and allow uh, you to grow up, to allow you to mature. 
allow you to develop and grow up. And once you get to a place where you develop and grow up, then when you're ready for it, then God is going to give it to you. And see, this is what God has spoke to me. God said that wait until it fits. In other words, what you're waiting for, you've been rejected. It feels like you've been rejected. Now, it don't mean it's over. But God wants you to wait because you must develop, you must grow, you must mature. The Bible said we grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. Those are different stages that we go through in order uh, to get to a certain place, to uh, get to a place in God, to the promise, till we get to that last place of being settled. And see, that's the place that God wants you to be, is settled. In what you believe in God, settled. Settled means sold out. Settled means believe God totally, uh, totally steadfast, unmovable. And so God don't want you to become distracted. God don't want you to look to the left or to the right. But what he wants you to do is to focus. See, because he wants it to fit. But the only way he, it can fit, you must grow. You must develop. And you must go through the stages, the process, the four stages to get to that place where it happens. And so when, when in this waiting period, waiting simply means to wait until God moves. To wait until God gives you an answer. Or to wait until God uh, sends uh, uh, the reward or sends strength. If you need strength, you're weak and you're waiting for strength, then wait on God by asking. And then you wait on God by asking, position and posture your spirit to receive. And when you position your spirit and posture to receive, you will receive the promise. But you got to wait. You simply got to wait. And that means to be kind, to help people, to be a servant. To, uh, to be nice, to be friendly, to be an example. And while you're occupying in obedience of what God has called you to do, you're waiting. And in your waiting, God is going to cause uh, what you're waiting for to come. But you must remain patient and faithful. Now, faithful, faithfulness is faith over a period of time. Consistency. That's how anything grow. We are a product of, we are a product of, um, we're a product of, um, we're a product of repetition. We're a product of sound. We grow from repetition, what we hear, what we know, what we hear, what we associate with. And so all of those things that uh, we see that we associate with, what it does, it forms and it shapes our mind and it forms and it shapes our perception and our vision to see and understand what it is that God is doing or going to do. And see, what happens also in the waiting period, oftentimes God will manifest or reveal himself in a way to give you encouragement. In those stages, in the places where you're going through your process, you become discouraged, you become worried, you become perplexed or troubled. Oftentimes, what God will do, God will God will send a a, a brief uh, intermission, or God will send a brief uh, 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 if you're in a like in a desert, He will send a brief um, oasis. He'll send you something to refresh you for a minute until you gather yourself. Then get back on that journey, just like with Elijah. When Elijah had um, when Elijah had shut heaven with the word, and also when God used him to tear down or destroy. Baal's false prophets and God revealed that he was God. <coughs> there was a time afterward when Jezebel came to him and told him that she was going to kill him on the morrow. And so he ran and he cried out to God. Uh, he ran and cried out to God. See, but what God did, God sent an angel. And this angel, while he was hungry, the angel gave him food uh, that morning, that evening. And after he gave him that food that morning, that evening, that food gave him strength and it gave him nourishment on his journey unto Mount Pariah where you met God. And I said, many of you at the stages where you are, what God will do when even in your pressure or your fire situation, God will send an oasis. God will send uh, an encouragement. One of the things that God send, that d does to me, and he has done to me on occasion, when I'm at my lowest place, what God will do, God will send me a, f God will flash something before me. He will flash me into the future. And the moment that he flashed me in the future, what he's doing, he's let me see where in his mind that he see me and that's where I'm going. And that's what he wants me to, that's my destination. That's my purpose. And so then he snatched me back into reality. But that brief intermission gave me encouragement to know to keep going. And see, many times God will send you a word. Many times God will send you encouragement, even at your lowest place. And the purpose of that word and encouragement is to give you strength. It's to give you joy. It's to give you hope. It's to give you that extra boost. boost. 
that you need to get back and shake yourself, gather yourself and keep going. But as God spoke this word to me and I'm almost done, is that wait until it fits. And see, if it hadn't fit yet, then keep waiting. Keep trusting in God. And also the thing that you must realize, even in the development stage, and I'm almost done, in the development stage, you take, my last point, teenagers, teenagers, 11, 12, 13 years old. And one of the things that with teenagers, you must realize and understand that teenagers that plays athletic sports, see, oftentimes teenagers, when they're, when they're too young or 11 or 10 years old or 12 years old, they cannot lift weights uh, because if they lift weights too early, what it could potentially do is stunt your growth or stunt their growth. And so for that reason, they must stay away until and wait until they get to a certain age, then they're able to lift. And so see what you need to understand and realize in your waiting process uh, for the promise or what God promised you or what you're believing God for, oftentimes you must be careful. You must be careful just like uh, the young lad or the young fellows want to lift weights. They can't do it too early because it'll stunt the growth. You must be careful because there are things that will stunt your growth. Such as doubt. Doubt and unbelief. It will stunt your growth. Not believing in God because the Bible said it takes faith to believe God. Without faith, you cannot believe God. And see, God wants you. God wants you to stay vigilant and focused. See, because as you are going in this journey, see, the atmosphere will know. You're on a journey to God and he know that you're a threat. And so what he will do along the way in this journey, he will throw things in the road. He will throw things in your way. And the purpose of him throwing things in the road and throwing things in the way is to get you to look at that and to get you to become distracted and not focus on your purpose or not focus on what God has called you to do. And so, but what you need to do, you need to remain focused and be vigilant and keep listening to God. See, because you're going to hit the target and God has something for you. See, but you must wait until you become developed. You must wait until uh, that thing come out, that understanding come out, that awareness come out. That's just like with love. See, some of you, you might want love. You might want a relationship. You might want to get married. You might want to, you know, have the white picket fence. And see, but it takes time, you know, in dating. It takes time in finding that person. See, because see what you do, you date this person. You date that person. And, you, you know, it doesn't work out. See, but it's not a bad thing. That's a teacher moment. See, but what it's doing is building blocks to teach you. And what it's teaching you, maturity. It teaches you how to talk to that person. It teaches you how to love that person. It teaches you how to understand that person. And see, the thing about it, ladies... And men, the thing that I understand, see, because I speak Japanese fluently, hello, and, and see, the thing about it that I understand about a different language or a person's language, and see what I understand even about love language or even about a woman. See, a woman, they have a language. Just like ladies, a man, they have a language. But in the Japanese culture that I understood, the moment that I learned how to know or speak their language, then I was able to understand their heart. I was, understand, I was able to understand uh, 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 their purpose. I was able to understand their direction and what they want to do and what they like. And so the same thing uh, in a relationship and the same thing in with God. See, the more you become more intimate with God, ladies, uh, the more you become intimate with his language. The more you become intimate with God's word, the more you become intimate with how to speak, how to talk. Such as in a relationship, the more you spend time with the persons, the more you understand their language, you know how to talk to them. You know how to get at their heart. You know how they think because the way to know a person's heart is to listen to their mind. Because their mind will tell you what's in their heart. See, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, because what goes in the mind, it's going to get to your heart. And so if you want to know what's in a person, throw some trouble out there. Give it some time. And, and, and see, the thing about it, you will really understand and know what's in a person when they become challenged. You really will know what's in a person uh, when they under attack. That thing that they that's comfort blanket, that comfort zone. Anytime a person has become attacked, attacked in the comfort zone, they are gonna respond. See, because they're relaxed, they're comfortable. And see, but if you want to know what's in a person, uh, watch them when they get in some trouble. Watch them when they become under attack. See, because when they under attack, what's in their heart and what's in them will come out. If if hate is in their heart, hate is gonna come out. If bitterness is in their heart. That's going to come out. And see, what happens oftentimes, you, you find people, you find people oftentimes that they have this type of complex where in, it's like, it's always everybody's fault. They never do no, nothing wrong. See, but the thing that you need to realize is that, see, 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 we were born in sin 
and Satan and the negative, which means that it was all of our fault from the beginning. See, the thing that you must realize about man and humanity in the Adamic nature. See, when Adam and Eve sinned, when God came to Adam and Adam, why did you sin? And see, what did Adam do? He pointed the finger at the woman. And the act went to the woman and said, hey, why did you do this? And the woman pointed his finger at the serpent. And so it's our nature to point the finger. See, but if you want true deliverance, you, you should take that finger that you're pointing at your brother. You should take that finger that you're pointing at your sister and, point, and take that same <laughs> pet finger and point it towards yourself. And the moment you point it towards yourself, then you own the pathway of being blessed. Also, you're on the pathway of being delivered. I'm done. That's what I want to say. God told me, God told me, God told me, wait, wait, wait. You got to wait. You got to wait for the promise. You got to wait until it happens. You got to wait until it fits. See, because God's promise, God's anointing, and God's word, they're clothes, they're holy clothes, they're holy garments. And in order to get to those garments and get those garments to put on you, you must grow and mature in a way where you're able to fit it. And see, oftentimes, if there's things in your life that's not fitting, it's because it's not time yet. You're not ready. It's not ready. You're not mature enough yet. But also, you must realize and understand, also with fitting certain things, also it could be that God don't, God, God said not yet. But also it could be that God don't want you to have it. So that's why when you're close to God and you're, you're, you're in a personal relationship with God, you'll know his voice. Because Jesus said, my, my sheep know my voice and a stranger, they won't follow. And see, the thing about a voice, there's a language, but there's a sound. And every mother recognizes their child's sound. And like matter, every child recognize his mother's sound and likewise his father. And so when you get to a place, when you get close to God, when you're in a dangerous situation and you're in a tough situation, you don't know what to do. See, his sound is going to speak out of you. See, because his sound will be embedded in you. Hear me. And hear me well. Wait till it fits. I'm done. Please share. If this word, if you understand this word, and this word is really help you in any kind of way, ah, please share. Listen and share. Wait till it fits. Wait till it fits. Because the Bible said the vision. It's for an appointed time. And in the end, it's going to speak. Don't tear, wait on it. But it's going to speak. But you got to wait for it. You got to wait for the promise. And anything that you want in God, you got to wait for it. But the thing about it, you got to wait for it in a good attitude. Don't allow, don't allow, don't, don't allow your, your spiritual growth to be stuck because you're complaining. Don't allow your spiritual growth to be stuck because you're back by, you're looking over your shoulder and you're worried about what someone else is doing. Uh, what God is saying, mind your own business and stay in your lane. And God is saying, God said, what did I call you to do? And see, if you stand in your lane and you're focusing on what God has given you, then you can maximize what God has given you. Because the Bible said, the Bible said there are many administrations, but the, but the same spirit. Many administrations, that means that there are different parts. Different parts. And so when those different parts come together and become unified, that's when God's glory will be revealed. Hear me and hear me well. Wait, I say. Wait until it fits. And if it don't fit, you must have quit.